What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. I have another Chanel review for you guys today. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Chanel Fall 2023 collection. We've all been waiting for this. I have both of the blushes. I have one of the loose eyeshadows and I have two of the Rouge Coco Blooms to review for you guys. So if you want to see some swatches, some demos, some comparisons, and hear all of my thoughts on whether or not this collection is worth it, then keep watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, guys. And if you are new here, consider subscribing to my channel. My name is Sophia and I'm a complete luxury beauty addict. I upload videos just like this one every single week. We love Chanel on this channel. We love Dior, Tom Ford, Guerlain, a lot of other luxury and Sephora brands. So if you like that too, hit that subscribe button to join our fam. And as a reminder, friends, I will be linking all of the products that I mentioned in this video in the description box down below. This collection right now at the time of me filming, it is now available in select Chanel boutiques. Some of you guys have told me you have found it at department stores as well. It is not available online yet, but I will be making a shopping guide that I will have updated. So as this collection launches, I will be linking it in the description box. So make sure you check there for the latest and also make sure you're subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram because that's where I let you guys know first when these collections drop. I do use affiliate links so when you shop through my links I earn a very small commission so thank you so much to those of you who have supported my channel so far. I very much appreciate that. Okay party people now that that's out of the way let's dive into these products. I am going to be putting timestamps down below so you can skip ahead if you want but if not you can chill out with us and watch the whole video. First I'm going to swatch and demo the blushes and then we're going to be doing the loose eyeshadow and then I'm going to do the lippies and then at the very end I'm going to share my final thoughts and then at the very very end I'm going to be doing some comparisons with the blushes so you guys can figure out if you already have something like this in your collection so buckle up and let's get into it. Starting off with the blushes these are called the Blush Harmony. These retail for $65 here in the United States. We have two shades here to check out guys. We have first 797 Beige et Coral. This is going to be a terracotta coral mixed with a beige and I'll show you guys the swatches here as well. I definitely think that this comes across as rather warm. If you like coral or terracotta blushes, I really think this is going to be up your alley. I also want to point out the obvious. Check out the embossing on these blushes. It is absolutely stunning. If you're like me and you love all those autumn vibes, you're going to love the embossing on these blushes. It is a beautiful bed of fallen autumnal fall leaves. I like it. I think it's so cute. And I also want to mention that we have the Chanel emblem here in the center. It is not an overspray. It goes all the way down to the bottom. So when you use this blush, you can consistently get the same color. The second blush in the collection is number 798 Rose at Mauve. This is going to be a mixture of, well, like it says, of rose and mauve. It doesn't come across as super purpley and berry. I will say that. I think the rose kind of tones it down a little bit. So it's kind of like a pinky purple. So if you are a fan of mauves or softer purples, I think you're going to really enjoy this blush. Both of these blushes are made in France. They have an 18 month shelf life and you do get nine grams of product. Now I was getting a lot of questions about whether or not these are oversized. These are not oversized, but they are bigger than your traditional Chanel blush. I'll show you guys a comparison here of the oversized highlighter that we got from last year. We also have the blush from the Mediterranean collection. I also have a standard Chanel blush right here. So you guys can see these are basically the same size pan as the limited edition ones that they've released in the past, at least the ones that were a part of the Mediterranean collection. However, if you look at the amount of product you get, you get nine grams of product. And if I'm not mistaken, the one in the Mediterranean collection, which is Brun Rossi, the one that I was showing in the image, you get 14 grams of product. So it is not the same amount of product, but the overall like component and pan size is the same. So I know I was getting a lot of questions about that. Personally, I like the format of these. I like the size. I don't really love the huge oversized ones because they don't really fit in my makeup bag if I'm trying to take my makeup on the go. I also want to let you guys know it does come with one of the little brushes that typically come with Chanel blushes. So it just fits in like that. You're able to close it up and there you go. It also comes with one of these little velour pouches. So you won't really see me using these in the demo, but I just kind of show you what it comes with when you 
when you purchase the blush. Lastly, I wanted to let you guys know that these are talc free. I don't see talc in any of the ingredients. They do have fragrance though. They're not super strong. They're not very cloying. They're not as strong as like a Guerlain blush, for example, which I still, I still use all the Guerlain powder products, but it's not that strong. It smells basically exactly like all of the Chanel skincare. If you've ever gotten samples, maybe, or if you have any Chanel skincare, it's the exact same fragrance as that. But yes, they do have fragrance. Before we get into the demo, I do want to show you guys this watches here one more time so you can pay attention to the finish of these blushes. I would describe these as a demi matte. They're not super matte. They have a little bit of a nice airbrush sheen to them. They are not glittery. There's nothing chunky about these. You're going to see that in the demo. And they do have pretty good pigmentation, which you also are going to see in the demo. I'm going to put these to the test so you can see just how much you can build these up. So with that, friends, let's get into the demo so we can get these blushes on my cheeks. Let's get these blushes on my cheeks. I'm going to start off with the beige and coral shade. I have a little squirrel hair brush here. I will link all the brushes that I use, by the way, in the description box in case you guys are interested. I'm using the squirrel hair brush because I think some folks out there just based off of some of the early swatches thought that maybe these weren't going to be super pigmented and I just want to show you even with one of the softest brushes in my entire brush collection you can still pick up quite a bit of pigment and build this color up so I'm going in very lightly at first I would not say that these blushes are lacking pigment at all. And I'm just going right into the center so I can pick up both colors. You can kind of swirl the brush around if you wanna mix them a little bit more. But I will say just because of the layout of this, because the Chanel logo is right in the center, I don't think it's super easy to pick up like just one of the colors in here. I do think this is gonna be like a swirl your brush all around kind of situation or maybe like just in one corner so that you don't disturb the embossing if you kind of want to maintain that. So even with the squirrel hair brush, I feel like it picks up a lot of pigment. Now, if you're wearing a little bit of like a dewier base like I am, you might want to go in with something that is a little bit like grippier and better for blending. So for example, I have the Sonya G Face Pro here and buff the color. I don't find that these are patchy at all. I, I feel like I can pick up the color just fine with basically any brush. There's no glitter in any of these blushes. It just has like a little bit of like an airbrush sheen, which is why I like to call it a demi matte. I'm testing this out now with the Sonia G Smooth Buffer. Just want to show you with a couple of different brushes what kind of options you have for applying the blush. This is probably... My favorite way to apply it is with these buffer brushes, but literally I think, I really don't think you guys are going to have trouble applying this with any type of brush. I just want to show you that it's definitely not lacking pigment. I don't want to make it like too crazy. Well, you know what? We're going to take this one off. So let's just kind of layer it up so I can show you guys how bright you can make it. Right here you can see with like a normal amount for me what it would look like. So let's like really go ham and maybe it'll look a little bit clownish, but it's okay because I'm going to take it off and put the other one on anyway. Just layer it up. See? It's pigmented! <laughs> Don't do this at home, friends, unless maybe you have the skin tone to justify that much. But look, you can really, really see just how pigmented these are. And it is a coral, but it has kind of like a terracotta, you know, kind of brownie undertone to it. I think it's really beautiful. I think that this color could work for both summer fall. It's kind of like a good all year round shade. All right, I have a fresh face. Now I'm going to go into the rose and mauve shade. I'm going to try the Sonia G Sheer Buffer because it has these little wispy bits at the top and I'm wondering if I can like go in this way. I can kind of like pierce the rose part that's in the center and maybe get a better mixture of the colors. So let's see how that works. Ooh, very pretty. I know that this brush is more for cream blushes, but I use it for powders all the time. I just wash it in between uses. So there you go. It looks very pink. It's not as terracotta and like orangey as the other one. And I think for the other side, I'm going to go back to the smooth buffer, just like, you know, a different type of application. See if it looks maybe like a little bit softer. Maybe it looks a little bit more mauve on this side. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think both brushes work really, really well. 
for application. And some people were saying they were a little bit worried about this one because they were worried it was gonna look like a bruise on their face. I don't know if I can relate to that. I think it just looks like a really pretty rosy mauve blush. I think that it has a little bit too much rose in it for it to look like a bruise. I think bruises tend to look more on the purple bluey side. Comment down below. Let me know you know, if, if, it, if you think this looks like a bruise, it's totally fine. You can let me know. But um, I didn't I didn't think that this really had the right tone, but I could definitely see the potential concern for maybe it looking a little bit bruisey as well. All right, I tried to put on a decent amount so that you guys can really see the true color on my skin tone and I'll get up close so you can see the finish. It's not a super glowy blush. It's not chunky. There's no glitter. It's not a highlighting blush. It's not like the blush that was in the spring collection, for example. This is more of like a true blush formula. Some of my subscribers in my comments have told me that they have a little bit of trouble picking up the formula of some of the Chanel blushes. Like you saw, I don't feel like I had any issues with that. So there you have it, friends. This is the Rose and Mauve shade. Comment down below and let me know which one you like best. The last little clip that I will share with you is just both of the blushes on my cheeks at the same time, side by side, in case you want, I don't know, a side by side comparison. They are pretty different colors, but I know a lot of you guys are trying to decide between them. So there you have it. There are both of the blushes on my cheeks side by side. Next up, friends, we have the new Loose Eyeshadows, which are supposed to the intense long wear color. These retail for $40 here in the United States. And the color that I picked up is called Acacia. I think it is an absolutely stunning color. Obviously that is what I have in my eyes today. It is kind of a mixture between like a purple and a copper. It's very interesting. It's not really a duochrome, but it has a little bit of a shift. All of the colors in this collection are very elegant and autumnal. I'll just say that. I think all of them are pretty wearable and I do think that they're gonna show up on a lot of skin tones. I do wanna show you a close up of the packaging as well. I do enjoy the component because it feels very luxe. It is glass. I like the little emblem that is on the top. And then I'll show you guys here a close up of the applicator. It's a little nubby, spongy applicator. It's very short. So you guys are gonna see kind of the trick to using this when I get into the demo. These are also talc free. They are also made in France. They also have an 18 month shelf life and you get four grams of product in every little vial. So now that we have that out of the way, friends, let's dive into the eyeshadow tutorial so I can show you guys how I got this beautiful look today and show you some tips and tricks for how to apply these loose eyeshadows. Next, we're gonna dive into the loose eyeshadows. Now, I think the main call out that I have here is that these can be a little bit messy. I think you need to be careful. And like when you first pull it out, don't go straight in. I think you need to tap off the excess. However, because of the way that this is shaped, because the opening is so small and because this little stick is very short, it's like kind of hard to tap it off. Like even just now, I already got, I don't know if you could see that, I already got a bunch of eyeshadow on my finger and some of it has fallen down onto the floor as well, narrowly missing my joggers. <laughs> so thankfully I didn't get any on my pants, but I think you need to be very careful friends because if I were to not tap that off, all of that pigment would fall onto the tops of my cheeks and it would ruin my day because I would have to redo my makeup. So what I did when I was testing this out is I actually just did my makeup in the bathroom. I'm sure a lot of you guys do your makeup in the bathroom, but if you don't, this might not be the most convenient single eyeshadow for you. I basically just held this over the sink and I tap, 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 tap off all of the excess and I had no problem applying it to my eyes. But if you just go in straight from here, it is a little messy. Even when I was in the boutique, the sales associates were like, I don't know, we're kind of playing around with these. And they're like a little bit messy, especially because they're not in a bathroom. They're like on the Chanel sales floor. So let me go and tap this off and I will be right back. I'm back and I have tapped off the excess. So now I'm gonna show you once you do that, it's pretty easy to just lightly dot it onto the eyes. Once again, this color is called Acacia. I think it's so pretty. When I posted some photos to Instagram of me testing out this makeup, a lot of you guys are asking me, what is on the eyes? Did you put the blush on the eyes? Nope, it is the shade Acacia. I'm gonna go in with a refer number one and just gently blend that out. The shadow, once you get it onto the eye, it does blend very, very easily everywhere. And you you can see like I had plenty of pigment on here. 
Like you are wasting a little bit of pigment if you're tapping it off into the sink. That being said, like you really don't need that much. And the finish of these, it's just a really pretty, I would call it a satin. It's not like a high shine. These aren't metallic. Um, at least this one doesn't have any glitter in it. The ones that I swatched in store did not have any glitter in them. Another thing you could do is you could pull out the little sponge and then you could take your brush and just go around it like this and pick up the pigment straight off the brush. I'm going to go in with a flatter brush. This is a Sonia G soft shader. I'm gonna pick up even more with my brush. I'm going into the little vial like this. I am layering it on so that I can get a little bit more pigment right in the center of the eye. I really have no problem just kind of putting the brush down there, but I feel like the applicator should do it without having to do the brush. You can like shake it up as well if you wanna get more pigment onto the little sponge. It kind of reminds me of those Lancome Juicy Shakers. Do you guys remember those? I loved those things, but I think they got discontinued. I'm just now applying this to a little small detail brush from Refer, and I'm going to apply that to the lower lash line. When I bought this collection at the Chanel Boutique, I did pick up some of the Le Beige eyeshadow palettes. This is the shade Warm, and I thought this one would go really well with the colors from this collection. I'm just gonna go into one of the shimmers here, and I'm gonna add a little bit in the inner corner because i just think it like finishes up the look <laughs> i don't know i think it's pretty maybe i'll put a little bit right there just to add a touch of shimmer if you really like the tone of these but you feel like it looks a little heavy or dark or smoky i think adding a nice brightening shade to the inner corner makes it look extremely wearable even for the daytime so you can see how that kind of brightened up the look lastly i am going to add a little bit of eyeliner to this look every time i go to the chanel boutique to buy one of these new releases i pick up at least one of my favorite eyeliners these are the chanel Yo Waterproof Eyeliners, and the shades that I got are Brun Agape, and this I believe is called, yes, Khaki Metal. I thought that these were two really pretty, you know, fall kinds of shades. I think I'm gonna use the Brun Agape because it's just like a really nice soft brown with a little bit of shimmer, and I think it'll go probably better with this eye look. And here's the look, friends, with the Brun Agape liner and some mascara. I'll link all the products I have on my face in the description box down below. I love the way that this turned out. I think these colors, they, they really suit me. I don't think that this shade is too red. I know a lot of you out there, you don't like kind of those reddish tones. It is more of like a purpley color. I think it's stunning and I actually like it even more when paired with that little topper shade, the little highlighter shade that I used from the other palette and the Brun Agape liner. It's not new, it's not limited edition or anything like that, but I can already tell I'm going to be using this all fall season because it's like that perfect brown liner where if you don't want too much, it's like not too dark. It just adds like a little bit of definition to the lashes. So I put that on the top lash line and a little bit on the bottom. So comment down below, friends. Let me know what you think of the loose eyeshadows and what you think of this shade, Acacia. The last product that I have to show you today, friends, are the Rouge Coco Bloom Lippies. These retail for $45 each here in the United States. And I basically got the lightest, most boring color in the collection. And then I got the brightest, most interesting color of the collection. So we have a very safe shade. And then we had a very Sophia shade. So let me show you the ones that I got. The first one here is number 150 Ease. This is a really beautiful warm tone nude. This is the one that I'm actually wearing on my lips today. You guys are going to see it go on in the demo in just a second, but it's a really nice, beautiful, wearable color. And then the second color, which I think is the most beautiful one in the entire collection, is called number 160 Wild. It is a beautiful, deep aubergine, kind of like a wine. I've been eating berries in the forest type of shade. Very, very beautiful for fall and winter. And if you guys have never tried this formula, it's very hydrating. It has a little bit of shine, as you can see here on my lips. I do have one or two shades in this formula, and it's really, really good. It's very hydrating. If you've ever tried like the Chantecaille Lip Chic or Lip Veil, if you've ever tried the Dior Refillable Hydrating Shine Lipsticks, if you've ever tried the YSL Rouge Volupte Shines, it's all kind of similar to that. So kind of keep that in mind, friends, if you have you know, those products in shades that are similar to this, maybe pick a different shade, but it's very much a similar formula. It's very elegant and it's also very easy 
to kind of apply on the go. So let's get into the demo for these two shades. Lastly, friends, we are testing out the Rouge Coco Blooms. I have the shades Wild and Ease. I'm gonna put Wild on first because I'm gonna take that off and I'm actually gonna be wearing the nude today. And the only reason for that is because the eye look is a little bit more bold and normally I would pair Wild with like, a fresher, lighter color on the eye, probably no eyeliner. But let me show you this because it is a stunning shade. I think this is the most interesting shade in the collection. If you want to wear deeper colors, but you're a little bit afraid, I think kind of going with a sheer color like this where you can put on just a little bit is a good way to do that. And here we are, friends. This is the shade Wild. Once you get it on the lips, it's like this beautiful, like wine-soaked purple mm, just reminds me of like i don't know like an old vine zinfandel or something like that it actually does match really well with the acacia loose eyeshadow now that i have it on my lips i'm like oh i don't want to take it off i don't think it's that wild but it's probably the most wild color that is in the collection so comment down below let me know what you think of this color so now i'm gonna try out the nude finally i'm gonna go in with the shade ease this is the nude that is in the collection and i know you guys like your nudes as do I. So we're gonna try this one out. Now I noticed this one, it doesn't show up on my lips as well as it might on yours because my lips are very rosy. So when I go in with nudes like this, a lot of times they don't show up quite as much. But I like the fact that these have a sheerness to them so they can kind of melt into your natural skin tone. This has a little bit more of a warmth than maybe some other nudes that you might have from Chanel, which might have more of like a pinky undertone or a cool undertone. So I like that. I like a little bit of warmth and I think it goes really well with the rest of the collection. But if you're kind of wondering what sort of nude this is, it's definitely more on the warmer side and you get that beautiful shine that you do with all of the Rouge Coco Blooms. It's very basic. It's not gonna be super different than maybe some other nudes that you have in your collection but this is the shade Ease. All right, my friends, I hope that all these swatches and the demos have been helpful so far. Now it is time for my final thoughts. As a whole, I think that this is a very lovely collection. I think all of the colors that they picked are very elegant. Now, maybe I'm a little bit biased because I like these types of autumnal tones, but that being said, I think that they have a nice balance of like warmer tones, cooler tones. I feel like there's something for everybody and all of the shades, they're just very elegant, as I mentioned before. I know I keep using that word, but I think they're very beautiful. Now let's kind of go through each of the products one by one and I'll sort of share my thoughts. Starting with the blushes. I think that they're beautiful. I really do like them. I think the main thing though is you need to ask yourself whether or not you need these shades. I know it's really easy to get caught up in the fact that they're just so darn beautiful, but you have to remind yourself that the beautiful leaf embossing, it is going to fade. It is going to fade, especially because if you want to get both colors on your brush, you do need to swirl it around a bit. And it's not the kind of situation where you have enough room to like really only do it in like one corner of the pan. What I do really like about these is that even though, you know, what's interesting about them is the embossing, what's also interesting is the fact that they have the emblem in the center. It's not an overspray. So even after the beautiful leaves, disappear you are still left with that chanel emblem in the middle and it's just like i don't know it's just nice to use when you pull it out it's something special it's something different than what you might already have in your collection so i like that about that i like both of the shades i think they're both beautiful as you saw in the demo, I think that they're plenty pigmented. I think that it's very buildable. I really like a demi matte finish. That's kind of my favorite finish when it comes to blushes. So overall, I really enjoy these. Do I think they're like absolutely necessary? Not really because I think that a lot of you guys have these colors in your collection, but if you're looking for something that's a little bit more unique from Chanel, something for fall, then I think that these are going to be great. I'm very happy that I picked these up. I can definitely see myself wearing these with a lot of looks, especially with a lot of the other like autumnal colors that they have in this collection. But hang tight, we are gonna do the comparison section so that you guys can see if these are similar to anything else that you might already have. And if you don't, if you don't have anything like this, then I'm, I think that they're great. I think that they're really, really pretty and I love the formula. Now let's move on to the loose eyeshadows. I'm a little bit torn on these. When I was playing around with these in the boutique, I thought, 
I'm gonna hate these. They're gonna be so messy and so annoying to apply. But now that I've actually used them and I kind of figured out how I can make them work for me, I really like at least the one that I picked up. The packaging feels very luxurious and glass. I, I know I've mentioned that before, but I like the packaging. It really just is the fact that this little applicator is so short and the way that these are designed, you're gonna get loose eyeshadow everywhere. I mean, it's a loose eyeshadow. It's kind of like the Givenchy Prism Libre blushes that a lot of you have been asking me about. I've demoed those in my videos before and I've mentioned really great longevity, really nice formula. Just depends on whether or not you can deal with the mess because anytime you have a loose powder, loose blush, loose eyeshadow, there is an element of messiness to it and I don't think that Chanel designed these to circumvent that reality, if that makes sense. So you need to ask yourself, are you kind of okay with the application process that I described in the demo? Because I really think that that is the best way to make these work. The colors are beautiful. Like I love this color. I love the finish of them. They're not gonna be crazy metallic or anything, but hey, it's Chanel. I thought the longevity was good. I did do a wear test yesterday. Both of the blushes, excellent wear. This, pretty good wear as well. Maybe it faded just a little bit, but it did increase on my eyes as well. Way better than the Chanel Bizance palettes. You guys saw my review of that. I can link it down below. The longevity of those just really wasn't that good. It was a little bit of a deal breaker for me. So if you want something that is a little bit longer lasting, then I think you're gonna like these. I do challenge you to think like, do you really need this? Are you really gonna try and make it work for you? I'm tempted to get another one, but I just keep telling myself, okay, if you were to get another shade, it probably would be like the lighter champagne one. And how many other champagne single shadows do you have? I mean, hey, there are some champagnes even in like this little warm palette that I purchased at the boutique. Like I could just go into one of these shades and get exactly the same effect. So in many ways, they release these types of things, not just Chanel, but like every brand, they release these single eyeshadows as a way to just sell you something else. And quite often these have higher margin because they're selling these at $40 when like, you could get a whole palette for maybe $60, $65. So do the math there, friends. These are not the most economical buy. So if I were to get anything from the collection, this would probably be my last pick. Although I do enjoy the one that I picked out. It's not a bad product. And then lastly, we have the Rouge Coco Blooms. I think you all already know I'm really a big fan of this formula. They are pricey. They're $45. But if you've never tried this formula or maybe you see a shade in this collection where you're like, oh, that's a unique shade, like the wild shade that I demoed for you guys, then I do think that they are worth picking up. They are very similar to those other comparable products that I mentioned before, like the Chantecaille, the Dior, the YSL. So go through your collection, see what shades you have before you go picking up a shade. Don't impulse buy. The shade Ease, the one that I'm wearing right now, it is a very beautiful nude. I really do like it. Do I have a shade like this in my collection? I bet you I do. Like 100%, I already have this shade in my collection. I don't regret buying it. I did want to demonstrate it for you guys for review purposes because I have a feeling that this is probably going to be the most popular shade because it is a neutral. It's a beautiful shade, but it is quite dupable. My pick is the shade Wild, but that's just me. I love these bright, beautiful kind of rich berries and those types of tones for fall. I think this one goes really well with the mauve blush. Maybe you already have some berry blushes from Gucci or RMS or Giorgio Armani or something like that. You can pair those with this. So all in all, I really like this formula. It really just comes down to like, which of the shades are you going to pick up? Actually, when I was in store, I swatched all the shades. So I'll show you guys a clip right here of what those look like. A lot of the other shades have kind of like a reddish or orangey undertone. So hopefully this helps you guys can get a look at what these look like. I know the store lighting isn't the best, but for me, the purple wild shade is the one that really stood out to me. So there you have it, friends. Those are my thoughts of this collection. I think it is absolutely beautiful. I just wanna make sure that you guys prioritize what you buy since these shades are not that unique. And to compliment 
all of my thoughts and my reviews about making sure that you are not buying the same shade over and over. This is now going to be the comparison section. Congratulations, you've made it this far through my very long and detailed reviews. I'm gonna start off with some comparisons using the Beige A Coral shade, and then we're gonna do the Mauve shade. I'm gonna be doing these swatches live on my arm. So here is the Beige A Coral shade. And I asked you guys on my Instagram and on my YouTube, what comparisons you wanted to see. So these are all the ones that I at least had in my collection. So the first comparison I'm gonna do is with the Brun Russi shade that you guys saw in the size comparisons earlier. This is going to be more of a brown. I absolutely love this shade. And this one is a little bit easier to swatch just because it is flatter. Although I wouldn't say that I get more pigmentation from this shade. Unfortunately, I don't have the peach shade from that collection. It was sold out. I couldn't get it. It probably is closer to the coral one than the Brun Rossi. And then right here, I have Alizane. This is a little bit more muted than the one from this collection. It's a really beautiful warm toned nude with a teeny bit of gold shimmer. It's not as much of like a vibrant, you know, coral terracotta as this one. Here I have the spring release from this year. This palette is called 10 Dress. It is still available and I'm gonna swatch this shade right here. And you know what? They're actually a lot closer than I thought, but this one, it, it is lighter. It's a little bit more vibrant. Let me show you in the pan. I think it's easier to tell. See how it's a little bit more of a peach where this is more of a terracotta? This screams spring to me, and that one, I think at least, is a little bit more autumnal. Moving on to Dior, I have the shade here, Charnel. This is going to be more of a brownie nude. Just as a reminder, this is the one that we're comparing right here. So that is Charnel. This is another Dior blush that is called Grage or also Siage. They have the same name. It's very similar to Charnel and it's a lot more muted than the Chanel one. This right here is Dior Actrice. I always think of coral when I think of Actrice, but as you can see, it is a lot more of like that vibrant kind of pinky tone coral. Definitely not as you know, brownie and autumnal and terracotta as the Chanel. Lastly from Dior, I have the backstage blushes. So I have the coral and the rosewood one to show you here. Here is rosewood. They're just not as pigmented. It's also a more of a rosy tone. Maybe we'll compare this one to the other blush. And then here is the coral shade. I have a fresh arm now. We're gonna swatch the RMS in Maiden's blush. This is gonna be more of a nude, so less of that terracotta tone. I also have Gucci Rosy Beige, which is similar to Maiden's blush. This one is even more like brownie in tone. I also have Gucci Tender Apricot and bright coral. To me, these are more like colors, you know? Like this is an orange, this is a coral. What they've done with the Chanel one, and I'll just show you a side-by-side -side here with the coral shade. See how this is brighter and this is more of like that terracotta brownie orange tone. Hello, it's me again. I completely forgot to include the Gucci soft red comparison. This was located in a different makeup bag. Sorry guys. And one of you guys asked me on my Instagram if these were similar. So thank you for reminding me. They actually are quite similar. Here's the side by side and I will show you the swatch comparison. So here is the swatch comparison as I promised. So on the top we have the Gucci and then on the bottom we have the Chanel. The Chanel is a little bit more of a brownie tone. It's a little bit more subdued. And then the Gucci it's slightly brighter, but they are pretty similar. You know, like if you already have the Gucci one, I don't know if you really need the Chanel one. You could always kind of mix it together with your bronzer and you can basically get the same shade. I also have the Armani Beauty Off Beats. You guys can probably already tell this is gonna be a lot more vibrant. And lastly, I have the Givenchy Prism Libre Blush in the shade Organza Cien. I got a little bit more on my finger there. Oh, wow. I didn't think it was gonna be so similar. This is a little bit more of like a rosy undertone. Like I, I think that this, I'll show you right there. See how it's not as orangey and as terracotta? You know what? I don't really have anything 
that matches up quite like the Chanel blush. A lot of you guys were asking me, how does this compare to Grand Ball from Dior? Because Dior did come out with a limited edition of that shade Grand Ball, which by the way, it's permanent. I already reviewed that shade for you guys when I reviewed the Dior blushes when they were reformulated. I didn't really care for that shade and that formula. It is very, very dupable, but I will put up an image right here, guys, of a side-by-side -side of those two colors because I did return the Grand Ball shade. And you guys will see that the one from Chanel, it's more of like that corally terracotta that I keep mentioning. Sorry if I sound like a broken record. Whereas Grand Ball from Dior, it's more of just like your basic nude with like a pink undertone. It is extremely dupable. It's a nice blush. It's just, it was the shimmer finish. And what I have found is that from Dior, I prefer the satin finish blushes. The shimmer finish, I don't know. It just seemed a little bit dry for me. That was just my personal experience. I much prefer that grayish slash sia shade that I swatched for you guys earlier. I also wanted to mention that I did look into my Pat McGrath blush collection to see if I could find something similar to this. There is the Paradise Venus shade, but that one is actually more similar to the Chanel Brun Russi shade that I swatched for you guys earlier. It's more of like that brown terracotta. It doesn't really have like a coral element to it. So I wanted to just mention that. Next blush, now we have the mauve shade right here. And I'm gonna start off with Gucci Warm Berry. I got a lot of requests to compare these. <gasps> oh, they're pretty similar. Okay, so the Warm Berry, it actually is kind of like the warm version of the mauve shade. Can you see how this is cooler in tone and then this is warmer in tone? So if you always like this kind of in like the depth and the color, but you didn't like how warm it was, maybe you will like the one from Chanel. I also have right here the Dior Rosy Glow in the shade Berry. So we've got two Berry shades to swatch today. Let me get a good swatch in there. Okay. This is more of like a grape, like a, an actual purple. I feel like you can see the difference there. We are now revisiting the Rosewood shade as I promised. Once again, it's a little bit more on like the pinky rosy end of the spectrum. I have here Hanky Panky from RMS. I got a lot of requests for this as well. Woo, so pigmented. You know, this is one of my favorite blushes from RMS, but I do hear some of you tell me that this is just a little bit like too pigmented or too warm for you. It's kind of like in the same color family as the Chanel, except this is just like so much more subdued and a little bit more cool tone. I am in the midst of editing this video and I just realized that Hanky Panky and the Loose Eyeshadow Acacia are actually kind of similar colors. So there on the left, you can see the Chanel Acacia, and then on the right you have Hanky Panky, which of course it's more shimmery, but they both have like a purpley and coppery shift. Hanky Panky is a little bit more purple, but I just wanted to point that out to you guys. If you have Hanky Panky, you can just put it on your eyes and it's like a really similar shade. I also have Fairy Night from Valentino. This was recently featured in my blush ranking. You know, that's almost like the more pigmented version of the Chanel blush. But these, like, they blend out a lot more. Here I have Mystery from Armani Beauty, another newish release from this year. Oh, uh, I don't know. I still think it's more, it's got more of like that red base to it. I also was not, I don't think I have a Pat McGrath blush that is this tone because it is more of like a mauvey purple. A lot of her blushes are actually more pink. It's like various shades of pink as we kind of already know. She has a lot of pink and nude blushes and then she's got like some terracottas, but none that like quite match up to these. And then the last one that I have here is Hourglass. This is At Night. This is such a good fall blush. I love it. Oh, hold on. Let me swatch those next to each other. Nice. That one is probably the most similar because it has that nude shade that's kind of marbled together. It 
makes it a little bit more nudie, but you can see some of the similarities there. Because this one has the rose core, it shows up with more of that like dusty rose type of tone. And that concludes the comparison, friends. Thank you for sticking with me throughout this very detailed review. If you liked it and if you found it helpful, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget, I will have a shopping guide linked down below for where you can purchase this collection as it drops across different retailers across the internet, across different countries. So I will do my best to keep that updated. And now it is your turn, friends. Sound off in the comments down below and let us know, what do you think of this collection? Is there anything you think you're going to pick up? Is it a total skip for you. Let us know. And with that, friends, I hope that you see some beauty in your day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.